I'm going to talk about a couple different things. I had somebody write in that they had recovered from surgery and kept working on their motor pattern, thinking that that would be a good thing to do while they were recovering before they could really go out and make a full swing. And they said it worked great. They played well. They played maybe shot a little better even than their average score after being off, not doing anything but working on their motor pattern. So that was cool to hear. And then he asked me to explain the handle settings in a more clear way. So the handle settings are, there's two parameters that they're addressing. One of them is just physical size and strength. So this is perfectly fine for, you know, our healthy, you know, 12, 13 year old kind of at the bottom edge, if you move this handle down low enough. So if it becomes, if you move the handle up high, it would be unwieldy. And you also see that from here now, I don't need to use any strength to lever that. So that's less work. And then just because the mass is closer, it's much less work to move. So that's one aspect. And then the second aspect of that is what kind of swing are you trying to train? So if I was trying to train the way I like to hit a wedge, that what I work on is synchronized motion, which means instead of separation that I would do in a full swing, I move everything together and sort of minimal wrist hinge. So I'm creating all my speed with one lever instead of combining the lever of my body with the lever of my wrists. And the reason for that is maybe somewhat obvious is that I can control speed better if I'm working with one parameter than trying to time two. So if I want to feel what, and then also, of course, like always, now I'm focusing much more on plane, delivering, you know, a square club face, delivering the same loft all the time. So if I take some of this out, this is more loft, less loft, right? If I take some of that out, now my hand's coming back, same place, same place, same place, same loft. Like Lee Trevino said, just this should move the same, your hand should be moving at the same rate as the club head in a, width, in a short partial wedge so that if I keep going, it's still the same relationship. So practice a consistent relationship, especially here. Now most people have some hinge, but then consistent relationship through the ball. So let me show you that swing. So very different from the full swing sequence and timing and what you want to do. You're trying to keep everything as simple and controllable as possible, especially loft is a big one. So a little bit of variation is a lot of distance difference. And then secondarily, like I was saying, trying to figure out how much speed you're producing when you have some of this is much harder than if you do it all together like that. So for a wedge, practice that staying on plane, so don't chase or whatever. Nice, perfect little plane. And then the loft, you present the relationship you have here, can keep going all the way to here. So let me see how I can do that. And that's a little more rigid than I would normally hit. So I don't think being personally, that's a little too rigid for me. I would be a soft version of that. Let me do that. Because I think you get a little more feel with a soft shot like that. So anyway, that's the low setting. And now the taller setting. So first thing, a very strong person. Well, oh, there's three parameters. I'll talk about the third one after I do the other two. So a stronger person, a stronger person is gonna need to wanna use a longer setting for a full swing because then it inclines you more to give up using your arms against your body and start using your whole body to move it. So now this longer setting, more 
a whole body motion naturally because it's just more work. But the second thing that's happening is now I'm starting to time this aspect of the swing. So instead of just timing the aspect of the whole swing, I'm timing how the set and release takes place because now I can feel it as a movement sort of between my hands. So like I've talked about before, you want to feel where that's happening. And then you want to move that so it feels like the release is there, not there. So you can just feel where that is. This would be releasing it at the ball. This would be releasing starting at the ball toward the target. So that's what you want. The release is there, not there. And most people are making that mistake to some extent because you're thinking about hitting the ball and you want to collect the ball and release it toward the target. So longer the setting is, the more you feel this secondary hinging motion and also the more you're going to be inclined to use your whole body. So there's that. And then I'm just going to address briefly the other thing he said, which was I hit it really good, scored well, that was great, had kind of a too much of a draw. So if you've been coming over the top your whole life and now you've programmed yourself to come from the inside, you may not have any more a perfect matchup. And so I'm going to say this firmly, do not change your motion to fix that. So the one thing you don't want to do not, don't, don't do it. If you have a nice motion that's continuous, unencumbered, doesn't have any weird fix or change in it, that's the last thing you want to mess with. So what you want to do then is say, so there's really only one thing to fix. The Assuming you're hitting the ground in the right place. Right? The only thing to fix is the relationship of your face to your path. Because if he had told me uh, my motion feels great and you know everything is good except that I'm hitting everything five degrees left, I would say, well, stand five degrees closed, assuming it really is a good motion, or the reverse, stand five degrees open and just aim your motion. So a lot of great players had a motion that wasn't at right angles to their feet and they just aimed that motion because for whatever the way their body worked, if you can understand how to make your face square to path, open to path, close to path, if you can control the relationship of face to path from that position, you're fine. No reason to have to be some standard idea of open or closed. It's whatever works for you. Move it forward, move it back. So now, you've got a good motion and you figure out, okay, I've got my good motion, everything is fine. You've got a couple choices of how to then, I'm drawing it too much. I think the one that's least predictable is the one that's the most obvious, which is to then change your grip. Right, so it would seem, logically, if my grip is like this, that's going to want to make my club face closed, right? Or my right hand is way under. Then if I, especially this hand, I usually think of this hand, because of the way I swing, I don't manipulate a lot with my right arm. But, so I think of this hand. If I make this grip more weak, that should then fix this overdrawing problem. But what can happen and what actually happens to me is sometimes if I'm too strong, my body just knows I can't let this go. So then what my body does is holds off the club face and I actually hit a big slice. So a too strong grip actually makes me push slice it. So when I get my grip to the right place for me, for my body and my motion, then my body knows I can just go ahead and let go. And so then if I was overdrawing it, it could be either too strong or too, you know, 
So it doesn't, it's not a necessarily a one-on-one -on -one equation. What I think is more, if everything else is about working and you just have too much draw, I tend to think for myself, I fix the draw and fade problem with my spine angle a little bit. So if I go, if I become too vertical, I'll show you that. So I'll do, be very vertical here. There my spine is very vertical through the ball. Surprisingly it didn't draw a lot, but normally I would say that's going to be, let's see if I can produce this draw I'm talking about. <laughs> I got pitching much here. So a lot of matchups of course, but I'll get I'll go very flat through the ball. So this way, as opposed to maintaining a lot of tilt, I'll show you both versions. So So there it is. Pulled it a little bit, overdrew it, goes a long way. That's cool, but not great. That's a lot of, that's a lot more shape than I would want. So what I would fix first then is that. So instead of coming through that way, I'll try to come through more this way, which is to make this plane of my shoulders a little steeper and also keep more tilted my spine. So that's a draw. That's neutral, possibly fade for me. So the motion's not changing, just my angle. So now I'll try to go the other way more so maintain a lot of spine angle through the ball. Let's we'll see what that does. So there, right side, much more under. So I don't tend to hit much of a fade, so my fade is, like you see, small, if at all, sort of straight to manageable draw to overdraw is the range. I plan to work on getting an actual fade so I can get myself out of trouble, but let's see if I can do an actual fade. So, you know, ball position is the other thing. Ball farther back is going to be a draw, ball farther forward. So I would mess with those things. I think the grip is less effective than ball position and spine tilt, at least for me. So let's try one way back. So now I'm moving the ball way back, likely to catch it very clean, but hit a draw just because of my ball position. Yep, and it's a draw, not a huge draw, nice and solid. A little lower ball flight. Very solid shot, very long. Now, this is harder to do, obviously, because now if I move it up in my stance, my chances of hitting the ground too soon get big, but this would be a way to hit a fade, to move it up a little. And indeed, I hit the ground before the ball. But I got a fade, so I personally, you know, I didn't go anywhere because I hit it fat. So I wouldn't do that one. But I wouldn't, again, so what I'm trying to emphasize here is if you sit and work on your motion and then you've got a shot shape problem, really be diligent about trying something other than changing your motion. So there's a lot of little parameters. You can even see if I set up, I just watch the club face opening and closing when I do that. And then I know. Okay, I can feel myself right there. That's a little bit of a fade in my mind. It's a little off to the right, but yeah, that's a fade as well. So, there you go. That's the things to work on, and that should answer. I, there may be more, and if people have other ideas they want to send me about the handle settings and how it works for them, I would be interested in that too. But generally speaking, it's the amount of hinge and the amount of effort and then what you're intending in terms of what kind of swing you're making. So if you're intending a partial swing where everything is together, the lower setting is better. You want to move the setting up if you're intending more of a sequenced swing that has leg and hinge and release and those, all those timing elements.